Copy is Adobe's word processing software designed to allow editors and designers to work together on the same InDesign document. InDesign is industry standard software for layer and page design. It has lots of different tools available. I'm using the Essentials workspace here. The group of styles that are most important to this workflow is the character and paragraph styles here. And in Copy, we have way less tools to work with. If you set up your display using the advanced workspace, you'll see we get a similar palette to InDesign with all of the character and paragraph styles. In a traditional workflow, the author's manuscript goes to the designer. A sample chapter is designed and signed off before the whole book is typeset using InDesign. The designer then sends first page PDF proofs through to the editorial team. Depending on the size of the project, this could just be the author, or it could be multiple people adding their comments and corrections. The marked up PDF is sent back to the designer to manually take in each correction. Once complete, the second page PDF is sent back to the editorial team for review. The process is repeated over and over and over until finally the book is perfect and the designer can create press-ready PDFs to be sent to the printer. Let's compare this to an InCopy workflow. The manuscript can be put into InCopy by the author or the designer. A sample chapter is designed and signed off before the whole book is typeset using InDesign. The designer stores these files in a central server that all parties have access to. The designer will alert the editorial team that the files are available online. Everyone, apart from the designer, will need their own copy of InCopy. Each person can open up the InDesign document in InCopy and see the editable version of the book. Only one user at a time can be actively editing the document so there isn't a double up of changes. If anyone is more comfortable editing a hard copy version of the book, both prints and PDFs can be made directly from InCopy. Once complete, the designer is alerted. The designer can take in any manual corrections, like moving or replacing images, and make press-ready PDFs for the printer. By using an InCopy workflow, you remove the need to double handle corrections and are able to reduce the turnaround time at each stage as well as reduce the chance for human error. The editors are editing and the designers are designing. There are two ways to start an InCopy lead project. The most common is the design initiated workflow. The manuscript is typeset by the designer using InDesign. They can link all of the text to InCopy and let editorial know that first pages are available on the central server. I have a document here with some simple styling included on an unused master page. The designer will place the manuscript into InDesign. Tick Show Import Options as you import the text and this dialog box will appear. I like to replace the incoming styles with my own InDesign styles where possible. Word and other word processing programs tend to bring with them a lot of irrelevant formatting data so it's best practice to replace the incoming styles with clean InDesign styles. Once the document is placed, the designer will have to manually go through and remove style overrides and compare the character style to the original manuscript. If the italics, for example, were styled using a quick command rather than a character style, they will get lost in the transfer. Once the designer has typeset the book, they can simply select the layer, the text is on, and link that to InCopy. The InDesign file is now ready to be viewed and edited by the editorial team. Second and wildly undervalued is the author-initiated workflow. The author-initiated workflow has the author flowing or writing their manuscript directly into InCopy. The author can style their own document using styles supplied from an existing InDesign file. Once the book has been styled, the author can alert the designer and the designer can flow the InCopy file directly into the InDesign document. This guarantees all of the author's styling, such as bold and italics, 
is kept intact. Once the book has been typeset in InDesign and any images added, the designer can alert the editorial team that the first pages are ready to be viewed online. In an author-initiated workflow, the author can open up a new InCopy document. Simply go to the Paragraph Style panel and use the drop-down menu to find Import All Text Styles. Navigate to the example InDesign document, or better yet, use the sample chapter of your own book supplied by the designer and import the styles. This will populate the panel with both character and paragraph styles from the InDesign document. You have three viewing options available to you in InCopy. The gully view is plain text with the styles noted in the left-hand column and the line breaks reflecting the line breaks of the InDesign document. The story view is similar to the gully view, but the line breaks have been removed so you can focus on the text. The layout view is exactly what you'll see in the InDesign document. Please note that you'll need to have the fonts used in the InDesign document installed on your computer for this to work. The second way to get started is to create your own styles. Simply hit on the plus on the paragraph panel and create a new style. You can create keyboard shortcuts for styles you use often. Whether the designer or the author has initiated the workflow, the designer's InDesign files are what the workflow centers around. Once the designer has typeset the book, it is now ready for the editorial team to get in there and start editing. Open InCopy and open up the designer's InDesign file. This small globe icon means that the text box is available to check out and start editing. While you have the document checked out, no one else can edit it. Once you've finished working on the text, you check the content back in and save the document. Multiple people can have the document open and be working on separate areas. If something is checked out, you can hover over the crossed out pencil and it should tell you who has the file checked out. A really handy way to parse information between editorial and design is to use the note function within InCopy. This is great for exact positioning of images and passing on design instructions precisely where they are needed. Once the editorial team has completed their edits, they just have to notify the designer that they have finished. The designer can open up the InDesign document and will be warned that the links have been updated. The first few times you do this, I recommend not automatically updating them, but manually going through to see what changes have come through. Any notes that have come through appear as a little triangle in the text, but also in a handy palette so you can scroll through them quickly. Once addressed, you can simply delete or respond so editorial can read them later on. The designer can check in and out any text boxes that need attention, just like the editors can in InCopy. Once happy, the designer can notify editorial that the next set of proofs are ready for viewing. Better yet, they can create a press-ready PDF for final check by both design and editorial. Once the final design has been signed off and press-ready PDFs or PDFX files have been created, I like to unlink my InCopy assignments. There are two really quick ways to unlink InCopy assignments. The text will return to normal static text. If in the future you want to relink the content to InCopy, simply use Edit, InCopy, Assign Layer to InCopy, and all the text on that layer will be editable again. Easy peasy. InCopy is the ultimate collaboration tool for designers and editors. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know in the comments below if you want a more in-depth look at how to use InCopy as an author or as a designer. Please like, subscribe, and share.